Hey everyone, this is Kat for the Wisteria Witches, and today I wanted to talk about apple magic, because not only are these delicious fruits, they are also awesome magical tools and symbols, and so I wanted to talk about that a little bit today, because they are very much in um, at the height of their season right now, um, so I thought it was pretty topical. Anywho, um, this apples have uh, a long history of symbolism, the probably the earliest most commonly known one would be the uh, its association with the Greek goddess Aphrodite for those of you who don't know the story uh, Eris the goddess of chaos was irritated that she wasn't invited to a party I'm obviously paraphrasing the story and she took a golden apple and rolled it into uh, the banquet hall with a note attached saying that it was a gift for the most beautiful goddess in attendance or the most beautiful woman or whatever and of course, all the goddesses were like, it's for me! And uh, so they picked Paris of Tr from Troy to decide which was, which was the most beautiful. And of course, they all promised him something. And uh, Aphrodite promised him the most uh, beautiful wife he could ever imagine. And so he picked her, and then the golden apple became a symbol of Aphrodite from then on. Uh, little side note that uh, beautiful wife was Helen of Troy and that of course kicked off the Trojan War so so much for love I guess um, <laughs> but that's actually what apples are a symbol of among other things is love and marriage in fact a lot of the folklore surrounding apples has to do with marriage um, there's one where see if I can do it it's where you like peel the apple skin and you want it to coil like that and you just keep going through the whole apple I'm not gonna do it because I, I probably can't um but you go through the whole apple and if you can get it all in one coil peel the whole apple with what without it breaking and you throw it over your shoulder um, it would create the initials of the person that you were gonna marry also um bobbing for apples is obviously a time-honored tradition. You don't see people doing it very much anymore, though, which is a shame. I think we should bring that back. But it was very closely associated with Samhain, and um, probably because it's a seasonal fruit, that would make sense. But the tradition meant that, you know, the, the apples would be floating in a barrel, and you'd try and get it out with using just your teeth, and whoever w was the f that would be the first one to get one out would be the first to get married. So it's got a long history of that kind of association. There's also a general association with healing and immortality, and I believe that the root of that is its association with Avalon. I have apple all over my hands now. Um, <laughs> Avalon was originally believed to mean the Isle of Apples, and I believe, if I'm not very much mistaken, that that's been sort of debunked by scholars over the years, but it still very much holds that connotation. And, again, for those of you who aren't familiar with the mythology, King Arthur was mortally wounded in battle, and Morgan Le Fay puts him onto a barge and ferries him off into Avalon, where he, um, and disappears into the mists, where he will live eternally in sort of a Garden of Eden, Heaven situation in Avalon. So that's um, that's where that connotation comes from. It's also just generally a symbol of magic, and I'm sure most of you... Oh, no! I cut it too far up. Here we go. I'm sure most of you, at one point or another, have seen this, the star in the middle of an apple. And... Uh, it's a great symbol. I've seen it used as a teaching tool to teach children about, you know, the goddess and about, uh, you know, sort of neo-paganism and some of the concepts around that. Um, so I think that's a really cool one. Actually, speaking of, uh, in terms of things that you can use it for, use apples for, the seeds are really great. I've got, I've got a thing for seeds this fall. Seed pods and seeds and pits to, like, um peaches and apricots and stuff. I've just got like a Jones for them lately. I've been using them a ton in my workings. So um, the seeds are a great thing to use. Uh, what a great symbol for um, 
the beginning of things, uh, things you want to manifest. Um, and they also, I think, make great offerings because, I mean, how pretty does something like that look on your altar or wherever you leave offerings? But, um, you know, it's, 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 I think it's convenient too, as opposed to making like ritual cakes every time or whatever. I think it's a really great offering to make if offerings are your bag. As far as um, g going back to its uh, symbolism to do with healing, I found it very interesting when I was sort of brushing up on some of my um, research is that its long-standing association with healing is part of the reason why there, the expression, an apple a day keeps the doctor away, is in existence. Um, obviously, it's a general message to eat more fruits and vegetables, but apples specifically have a very strong connotation of keeping you healthy. And that's why it's not like, eat a banana a day or whatever. So, that's that. Now, its modern day symbolism and sort of the symbolism that that has evolved over the years is really interesting, especially considering how closely tied it is to it, it is to magic. A lot of um, resources will say that it's a symbol of magic itself, because over the years it's become a symbol very much of temptation. Obviously, with the story of Eve, and um, for some fairy tales like Snow White. It, it has become this sort of symbol of something sort of foreboding. And I think it's interesting that that the apple was chosen of all things, because if I'm not mistaken, and I'm no Bible scholar, but if I'm not mistaken, the Bible simply says that she ate the fruit of the tree of knowledge. So just something that I thought was interesting, um, that, they, that they picked the apple of all fruits that you could possibly pick. Um, I'm just going to eat this now. <laughs> um... The, as far as, um, what was I going, oh, I've completely lost my train of thought now. Um, the, uh, the current symbolism, yeah, so, so that's, that sort of has evolved over the years, um, into, into that, and I, and I, I wonder, I don't always like to buy into those sorts of conspiracy theories, but I do wonder if maybe it was because of its close connection with magic that it, what did become this symbol of something that's kind of evil and and scary um but in a very deceiving sort of way it's a very from a perspective of from a, like a puritan perspective it's like the perfect metaphor for witchcraft because very often it was like oh the devil's gonna come to you and it will be very he'll be very charming and all this and that but it's you know it's really evil um obviously we all know that's not the case, but in terms of that kind of rhetoric, it makes a lot of sense. Anyway, total side tangent. I have absolutely nothing to back it up other than my own musings, but anyway. Um, as far as other um, things that are connected with apples um, that I think are handy in apple magic, one of the, the spices that are generally associated with apples, what's the first one you think of? Cinnamon, obviously. And that one very typically is used uh, that for, from what I have experienced um, in magic associated with protection and prosperity. So that's another kind of interesting thing to think about the connection between the two uh, because I like to I like to look at those sorts of things things that flavor profile wise fit together very nicely but um, the correspondences it's like how do these two come together uh, so anyway food for thought so, anyway, that's uh, pretty much all I have to say on the subject. I'm going to finish my apple now, and I hope you all are doing well, and I hope you are enjoying apple season. I'm hoping to go apple picking maybe next week. If I do, I will be sure to post a field trip video um, of our shenanigans, but until then, uh, blessed be, guys, and thanks for watching.